Right, today I'm going to tell you the story about Roach Trebo. I don't know how to say his last name. I'm just going to call him Rock for argument's sake. This is the worst story I've ever come across. I cannot believe that a human being to this motherfucking level can do the shit that they did. There's no psychoanalysis today. There's no, well, this is why he did what he did. This is why he was there. None of that. This is simply doing what someone should have done a long time ago putting this motherfucker in his place, even though he's dead. See, other creators have told you the story of the Ant Hill Kids, and I know a lot of you have heard of this story, but no one has focused on this motherless, sadistic, sick fuck, Rock Tribble. Forgive me for my vulgarities, but I can't help but get angry. I can't help but get angry at this shit, and I hope in telling you this story, it invokes such emotions in you, such as the, the level of depravity and the severity of this story but three quick clout chasing announcements before we continue number one if you like the video please subscribe number two follow me on instagram so i can get to know you better dm me that you're from the crime channel and number three i do have a second channel link is in the description see rock was the leader of a group known as the ant hill kids coming out of canada and these this community was known as you know a free thinking commune that had their own weird version of christianity and a quick disclaimer this video does include some themes of christianity i'm not trying to ridicule christianity i respect the religion i respect all religions please don't take it personally it just so happened that rock the dickhead himself hijacked some of the tenets of christianity for his own agenda now, Rock himself was born in 1947. He was born in Quebec to Hyacinth and Pierrette Trebeau. Now, according to Rock, his father would abuse him when he was a child, but this was a claim. This was an accusation that his father always denied. Now, Rock himself dropped out of school at the age of 13, and he had an obsession with Christianity and the apocalypse. Initially, he was raised Catholic, but then he converted to the Seventh-day Adventist church, I hope I said that correctly, and then he started to follow their way of life. He stopped drinking alcohol, he stopped taking tobacco, and he stopped eating processed foods. And with all due respect, I can stop drinking, I did. I can stop smoking, I don't. But the processed foods, uh-uh. God, allow me, please. Now, during his time at this Advent church, again, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong, it was short-lived because people realized he was trying to gain leadership within the church and eventually he was kicked out. But while he was at the church, he managed to secure himself a small following who started to believe his teachings. See, by the mid-1970s, Rock believed and he convinced himself he was the savior of humanity. He started to tell people that God sent him to this earth to save humanity, you know, from the apocalypse. Now, with all due respect, if I wanted my life saved, I wouldn't go to this Charles Darwin wannabe, this fucking discount St. Francis of Assisi. Uh-uh, look at him. You think he's going to save me? There is no doctrine of religion that can save me from the amount of ass I love eating. So, Roke had a new goal. He wanted, after, you know, he was kicked out from this church, he wanted to create his own commune of free thinking uh, scholars, if you like, who can, you know, spread his teachings and his new way of thinking. So his followers, Rock's followers, eventually accepted his interpretation of the Bible and started to believe that he was God. Now, there's a quick problem with his own philosophy. When he says he wants to create a free thinking commune, there's an issue here. See, with free thinking, so free thinking doesn't exist per se, but as a general rule, it can be done. But here's the problem. He said he's going to save humanity from the apocalypse. Well, you dumb fuck. There's only one way you know how the apocalypse exists. You only know of the nation of a savior through one avenue. That's the Bible. Whether you believe in the Bible or not, all he did was take ideas from organized religion, put it in a blender, bish bash bosh, came up with his own ideas. I mean, that's not free thinking. That's just, you know idea theft. See, throughout our time, you've had brilliant men like Thomas Hobbes, who came up with social contract theory, John Locke, who wrote half of American constitution, per se, John Jack Rousseau, even Leibniz, and his interpretations of God. You had the Cogito, I think, therefore I am, by Descartes. These are ideals. These are ideas. Not this fucking Charles Darwin fuck all the way in Canada. In fact, he became so stupid that he told his followers that in February 1979, the world would end. Again, the world ending, Armageddon, apocalypse, all religious 
penance. This guy was a charlatan. The level of fraudulence is unbelievable. And to prepare for this, you know, said apocalypse, his followers, which ended up being at this time four men, nine women, and four children, they moved into a place called the Eternal Mountain, basically out in the fucking boonies. And, you know, they made their own tents and cabins and all this kind of stuff. Now, at this juncture of the story, you might think, Cameron, that's my name, by the way, why are you so angry? This is just a guy with a few weird ideas. We've seen it before. The anger's gonna come. Just wait. Just wait. And surprise, surprise, February 1979, it came and then it went and no apocalypse. So, what does Roke do, right? You tell your peoples, hey, come live with me, live my way of life, live your own life, come live with me. And I'm telling you now, in 1979, the world's gonna end. But it doesn't. So, what do you do? How do you get yourself out of that pickle? This guy was so like his followers obviously didn't have the highest level of intelligence but i don't want to ridicule them because what happened to them i'm gonna come to that all right and that that is far more important than what i'm about to tell you now but like you know when you tell a lie right sophisticated lies i can respect but you know when people tell you just dumb shit right this guy said well we use the israeli calendar and then there was also the Christian calendar. And according to one calendar, it was wrong. And this calendar was wrong. So in the end, the calendars were just mixed up. Essentially, he cited the differences between the Israelite calendar and the Roman Catholic calendar. Motherfucker, you said you got the world ending wrong because of a calendar problem? It's as if he's a Windows computer and the calendar was wrong, but he just doesn't know how to do the patch update. Now, soon enough in this commune, it started to become even more bizarre. Roke, who thought to himself, well, I need more followers, decided he wanted to have a whole bunch of children. So he married all the females that were in the commune and he ended up fathering 20 children. Jesus Christ, 20 children. If that was me, my dick would have fallen off. This was with nine different women too. This guy had more women than I had hot dinners. But it was then, after this, where the brutal punishments started so in 1981 there was a child by the name of samuel gilger you know who was part of this commune he had difficulty urinating so what does roke do he sliced off his penis this is a two-year-old kid not a slice of pepperoni you fucking moron but what gets worse is that the young kid is obviously crying from the pain he's feeling you know in his lower abdomen so roke tells one of his followers to beat the boy to shut him up and the boy just kept crying and crying and eventually the young boy died from his injuries two years old and in a bid to hide the death to conceal the death the commune set the body on fire now the commune were told to shut their mouths and not tell anyone but eventually the police found out they came in and they found the burnt body of the boy roke and eight other people were arrested and charged with criminal negligence you know what that means it means they couldn't pinpoint the murder on someone so they just said oh it was negligence on a set of property and they were all subsequently released two-year-old two-year-old gets killed and they get released and then following their release uh rock and his followers moved out to a place called burnt river in ontario and then you know they built a new commune there there was over 26 children in the commune as well as other adults who remained loyal to roke after you know he was released see roke's followers they managed to survive by making their own maple syrup preserves they would make their own bread they would go hunt fish and smoke it themselves and when roke was analyzing them and observing them he thought these guys are like a bunch of ants hence the term ant hill kids as time went on roke started to begin drinking heavily and he became more aggressive and more violent he exerted control over his followers in very cruel ways and they were mentally too weak and physically too frail to do anything about it he actually forbade them from talking to one another unless he gave permission and he even had gladiator style tournaments where two children or adults would fight each other and he would sit there as if it's some kind of entertainment arena rock became increasingly paranoid that his followers were going to leave him he thought they were going to become defective and violent towards him See, Roke would continuously hit his followers with belts. He then soon introduced hammers and axes. If Roke thought one of his followers was, you know, thinking of leaving, he would pluck out all their hairs and then he would defecate on them. See, Roke told his followers, show me your loyalty. If you're loyal to me, prove it. Some of them would end up breaking their legs uh, to show proof. And think of the scenario. He goes to them and he says, hey, you're not loyal to me. I'm the king. Prove your worth. In their mind, They've gone through such severe torture. They've seen so much horror 
that breaking their leg is like a picnic. Imagine that. That's why they did it. Imagine that. So they got a sledgehammer and cracked their leg open. In addition, he ordered his followers to sit on lit stoves, shoot each other in the shoulder, smear feces on one another and cut off each other's toes. Bro, how fucking sick are you? How do you get, how do you get off on this shit? Even the children in the commune weren't exempt from sex and violence. They would be whipped and stripped naked if they misbehaved. Rock would nail some of them to trees and have children throw stones at them. Like you guys have seen the film Django, right? What made Django such a great film was the depiction of slavery. This seems just as bad. But then one evening during a blizzard, a mother placed her newborn baby outside allegedly to escape from Rogue's torture. But the baby died from the cold. The death led to an investigation and in 1987, 14 children were removed from the commune and placed into foster homes. The problem with this was that the children's aid commission or whatever, they were only interested in the children. They didn't care about anyone else. So everyone else stayed in the commune. So now in the commune, you got two men and eight women. And now that there's no children, Roke became even more violent. While he was drunk, he suddenly believed he was a doctor that can perform procedures on his followers. One evening, he placed a rubber band around the testicles of one of his followers. The scrotum became swollen and infected after being there for eight hours, the rubber band that is. So Roke removes the rubber band and then cauterized the wound with a hot iron. Then in September 1988, he ordered Solange Boyard, who was, you know, one of his followers, onto the kitchen table and stripped her naked. See, early in the day, she complained of pains in the stomach. So Roke decided he's going to punch her in the stomach, shoved a plastic tube up her rectum and performed an enema with molasses and olive oil. He then made an incision on the side of her abdomen and pulled out a section of her intestine with his bare hands. He ripped out a piece of her intestine and then shoved it back in the abdomen. He then, you know, was kind enough to stitch her back up. Boyard remained in agony and she was still alive until the next day where she finally died, most likely because of digestive chemicals that leaked into her abdominal cavity. Just when he couldn't get any worse, Roke then claimed he had the ability of resurrection. Essentially, he could bring people back to life. And if you look at the story, if you look at the chain of events, I guess from his own sick way, it, it made sense, right? First, he was a horny 13 year old kid because that's the problem this guy just needed some pussy when he was young but then through hijacking religious ideals right he wanted control and power but his own ego his own arrogance thought he was god so he can do whatever he wants he can tell people when the world's gonna end he can you know cure people he can help people um you know become better by giving them new free thinking ideas and eventually he was always going to think he can bring back life so what does he do he orders his followers get the body of you know boyard which is on the floor remove the uterus he sawed off a portion of her skull and then he ejaculated into her brain you know i i'm going to keep telling you this story but at this point i've run out of curse words by doing this into his her brain uh, he thought you know voila she would come back to life as if his fucking seed his sperm cells held the cure to death now of course she didn't resurrect so he told the followers right go bury her over there but before they buried her he took one of her ribs out and kept it as like a necklace around his neck. In November 1988, another member of the commune complained of like a toothache. So what does he do? Grabs a bunch of pliers, takes the teeth out. Now there's a lot more to it that I just don't want to go into, but eventually one of the women who was being tortured, she managed to escape. She went to a local hospital, I think in Toronto, and then eventually told the police of everything. And what happened? Roke only received 12 years in prison. But then, one member of the commune took police to the body of Boyard. Because at this point, it wasn't murder charges, it was aggravated assault. So eventually, Roke admitted to the murder of Boyard and he received 25 years in prison without the possibility of parole. And in February 2011, he was stabbed to death by one of his cellmates. You know, for anyone who makes YouTube videos, like all YouTubers, we all have something to say. That's why we do them. We have a big mouth. We are opinionated. The reason why YouTubers are able to do what they do is because they've always got an answer for everything. I genuinely, after seeing this case, have nothing left to say at this point when it comes to like crime or, or, or criminal behavior. I've seen everything. So why don't you guys comment? Tell me what you think.